Brian Ortega is an elite grappler. He also has one of the coolest guillotine finishes ever. Seriously, who does that? He also almost dethroned the greatest featherweight champion of all time with a guillotine. Let's take a closer look at his two successful guillotine finishes to see what we can learn. Ortega's first guillotine in the UFC came against Hanato Moicano. Moicano wants money! Moicano shot a bad double leg, which is by far the most common way to get guillotine. When shooting a double leg, you want your head up. If your head is up, you can't be guillotine. In order to have your head up, you need to have good posture. In order to have good posture, you need to have your hips directly under your head. Because of how badly Moicano is positioned, Ortega can attack with a guillotine. Moicano does a great job of fixing his posture by letting go of the leg and bringing in his hips to fix his posture. He does such a good job that he can grab a body lock and finish a takedown relatively easily because of how far forward Brian was leaning as a result of him fixing his posture and looking up. He almost escaped the guillotine. Look here, he was basically out. Unfortunately for Moicano, he landed badly giving Ortega a split second to readjust, which he did an incredible job of. When Moicano landed, he didn't have his legs underneath him. He was completely sprawled out for a second. That means he was pretty much defenseless for a second. While he recovered quickly, it was enough time for Brian to readjust and reattack. When Ortega was falling, he based out to try to stay up. While it didn't help him to stay up, it allowed him to push off the ground, turning his body back towards Moicano, just enough for him to cover the back of Moicano's head with his underarm. That is one of the most crucial details to finishing a guillotine and will take your guillotine from to sharp. Covering the back of the head allows you to crunch their head down into your forearm. Contrary to popular belief amongst white belts, you aren't supposed to lean back and try to rip someone's head off with a guillotine. You're meant to crunch their head into your arm. That leads to a significantly tighter choke. That's only possible by covering the back of the head. Ortega rushes to lock his hands and ends up controlling the arm, also known as an arm and guillotine, because the arm is inside the guillotine lockup. One advantage of an arm and guillotine is the trapped arm isn't able to defend as well. Ortega instantly locks his legs in close guard as you need some control over the body to finish a guillotine off your back. Otherwise, you'll end up in bottom side control, being von Flude. The only thing worse than being von Flude is getting buggy choked. Ortega does something super rare and locks a body triangle instead of just crossing his feet. It's usually really difficult to lock that in closed guard because of how long and flexible your legs need to be, and not worth it as there's some easy counters. Because he had the guillotine, however, it actually adds to the choke by squeezing the out of Moicano's body. Not being able to breathe because you're getting crushed while getting choked really sucks. Moicano gets onto his feet to drive his shoulder into Ortega's chest to loosen some of the pressure, a common counter to the guillotine. By driving in your weight, your opponent can't move, which means they can't finish the choke. It also helps you look up, which as previously discussed, takes off some of the pressure. That only works though, if you drive the free shoulder into the chest, not the shoulder on the side being guillotine. With an arm and guillotine, however, it's really difficult to apply pressure with the shoulder because it's in the guillotine lockup, essentially nullifying that defense. From this angle, we can see Ortega crunched the head as soon as he fell to his choke, forcing the tap. That was a really nice display of technical precision. We saw how Ortega used a bunch of concepts and little details to get the guillotine. He covered the back of the head to crunch the neck into the forearm, he used his legs to get control over the body, he constantly readjusted as opposed to just cranking, and he kept the arm in to make it more difficult to defend. Now let's take a look at another one of his guillotine finishes against Cub Swanson and watch how every single one of the principles we just saw are applied just like in his first fight. We begin with them clinched up against the fence. Ortega picks up a single leg, but let's go and tries to grab a collar tie. Three things happened here all at once, leading to Cub being low enough for Ortega to grab a guillotine. Firstly, Ortega had a collar tie, which he used to pull Cub down, Ortega threw a hard knee to the body, which will often cause someone to lean forward a bit. And third, Cub was going for some sort of double leg or duck under, but just like we saw in the first fight, you can't be lazy with it. You need to commit and go all the way. Unfortunately for Cub, he was a bit too slow with it and didn't have the best posture, which allowed Brian to grab a guillotine. Cub does a great job defending by instantly posturing up so well that we can see Brian on his tippy toes almost losing the guillotine and his balance. This is where we see brilliant fight IQ. Brian waits until Cub moves him off the fence, probably to try to grab a double leg and hopefully land in side control, or at least in a way that loosens the choke. Brian anticipated that, and as soon as he had space, actually jumped off of the cage to close his legs around Cub. That's a really risky move as you can be slammed or fall off and end up on bottom with nothing, but Brian risks it and manages to stay locked on. There's your control over the body. See how Cub's whole body falls forward? Brian's weight is more than enough to crunch the neck down, which instantly causes Cub to start being choked. There's your crunch. Cub tries desperately to get up, which takes an enormous amount of lower back strength while pushing out Brian's hip with his free hand to help shake him off. This is why the arm and guillotine team was so much better in this case. Besides for helping Brian anchor himself better to Cub, as he was using Cub's arm to hold himself up and not just the neck, he severely reduced the mobility of his second arm, making it that he couldn't really push the hips. There's your advantage to the arm and guillotine. Brian readjusts his arms as opposed to cranking, 
Why crank? When your body weight can do the work even better than your arms as long as you have a good grip. There's your adjustment. It's all the same principles, even when it's a slightly different position. Cub falls forward again straight into the choke. We can see him desperately trying to stand up again, but it's just too difficult and he's forced to tap. A really impressive display of fight IQ and technical awareness leading to an incredible submission. Subscribe, because you learned something.